Welcome to this lecture on CASES, uh, where we will discuss uh, the SRAM based memory in the memory hierarchy. So, before jumping into CASES, let's assume uh, what if, if we don't have uh, CASES in our uh, memory hierarchy, then our processor will actually demand for uh, data by, by sending an address, and the data will come from the DRAM. As we have seen in the previous lecture, uh, DRAM takes around hundreds of cycles to uh, get the data. So if you think about your uh, out of order processor, now the processor has to wait uh, for hundreds of cycles just to get the data. Right? And this is one of the crucial uh, problem in uh, computer architecture because um, minimizing this costly DRAM access is uh, crucial for or critical for any uh, application. right? Uh, because you, your final IPC and throughput will be affected by the number of DRAM access that you're making. So uh, remember the lecture on latency and bandwidth. Uh, so this is actually a DRAM uh, that, that we have uh, discussed so far. We will enter into this uh, slowly in a week or two. At this moment, assume this is a, a black box, which is green in color, and it has its own limitation in terms of uh, bandwidth. And since it has its own uh, uh, bandwidth limit uh, once you start demanding more data from uh, this DRAM it will start affecting your latency right. so after a sweet spot once you demand more data uh, this will actually uh, make things worse okay. so but typically in the bandwidth constraint systems uh, your performance will go for a toss uh, if you look at uh, historically uh, latency problems are harder compared to the bandwidth problem so bandwidth problem is nothing but uh, you know creating expressways right where you, where you can kind of create uh, multiple lanes uh, in the expressway and then uh, that will make sure that your throughput will go up you can actually uh, pump or send uh, more bytes in the same amount of time but uh, latency problems are kind of harder because uh, these are memories and then they are designed uh, with, with their basic technology, let's say SRAM or DRAM. And you, you can't uh, fudge uh, the basic notion of physics to, to uh, get, uh, you know, latency of zero, right? So in, in general, uh, latency problems are harder in, in any uh, systems field. It can be OS, networking, architecture or anything. So why access memory? Again, uh, we, we know this. Uh, this. This is because of the von Neumann uh, bottleneck uh, that we have discussed in the uh, first month itself. Uh, the data and store, data and code is actually stored in memory. And so, in the current uh, processors, you will find that uh, your processor has something called a memory controller or a DRAM controller, and the entire thing is there on chip. So if you look at any uh, recent uh, commercial chip from Intel or AMD, you'll find that uh, not only the processor pipeline, along with the processor pipeline, the DRAM controller is also uh, present inside the chip. But this particular uh, DRAM is actually uh, sitting outside chip, it's off chip. That, and then the frequency of uh, this uh, DRAM is actually uh, slower than the frequency at which the processor runs. And that's why it manifests uh, in the form of uh, uh, like hundreds of cycles. So uh, this is actually a, a pretty well-known uh, well problem in uh, computer architecture uh, known as the memory wall problem, because it's kind of creating a notion of wall to get the data from uh, memory. And the primary reason being historically, the rate at which uh, the frequency was increasing at the DRAM, uh, it was actually pretty slower compared to the rate at which the frequency was increasing at the processor, right? So imagine your processor is running in four gigahertz and your DRAM is running in let's say one gigahertz. Right? So that, that makes it uh, four times slower straight away. Right? There are other subtle issues, but uh, conventionally that, that was the primary region and that, that creates the notion of uh, a memory wall problem. So uh, it's also known as the grandmother of all the walls in the computer architecture. So we, uh, before we wrap up the course, we'll talk about all the walls which are there in computer architecture. Memory wall is one of them. So, uh, but but we should uh, make sure that we we, uh, we don't get confused with the hype of memory wall, and uh, the goal should not be to reduce DRAM accesses all the time. 
right uh, if you remember the amdal's law assuming your uh, program is actually memory intensive and it's accessing uh, dram then only uh, this mantra makes sense uh, otherwise if you try to improve your uh, dram access but it's actually not uh, memory intensive it's not going to memory uh, frequently then you won't get any performance improvement okay so with that let's look at some of the applications or benchmarks or uh, the programs that you write and see what what kind of access patterns we see from these programs so the y axis is showing memory addresses so let's assume 32 bit addresses okay and uh, the x axis is showing time right so uh, the way to look at this plot is uh, a given intersection will tell you at a given point of time what is the address that is requested by the processor okay so if you look at uh, carefully you will find locality uh, in this uh, access stream so one of the form of locality is temporal locality which means i am accessing the same address again and again for a long period of time right so this is a time access right that means so for for example uh, something inside uh, may, maybe uh, inside a for loop right and you are accessing it continuously right the other form of uh, locality is spatial locality where you are kind of accessing the nearby addresses not only the same address but also the nearby addresses so for example if i change this example to something like for loop inside the there is something called a of i so then we are actually accessing a of zero a of one and so on right so that means uh, if you look at it in terms of uh, addresses they are kind of contiguous and they are kind of uh, closer to each other so there is locality even uh, among them right so the notion of caches come uh, into the picture because of this locality which is present in the program okay and you can find uh, many examples uh, in, in your uh, programs like th these are nothing but your instruction uh, fetches for let's say some loops right so you are entering into a loop uh, performing some operation uh, and then, then then coming out right and then going again coming out again so like that and you can also have like stack accesses where uh, you, if you remember the notion of stack pointer so that there will be uh, stack pointer plus or minus depending on what you do you are entering into a function doing something inside the function and coming back right so all these are kind of if you look at the, there is locality here that the, the spatial locality here the addresses are actually contiguous they are uh, closer to each other right and uh, similarly we'll find many other examples uh, for example uh, if you're accessing an array it may be a, a vector array or a, a, like 2d array or a simple uh, scalar access so you will find uh, one of these uh, temporal or spatial localities so at a, at a uh, 10,000 feet view uh, the notion of cache or caching is actually it's a speculation technique and that works uh, because of locality so what I meant by speculation technique, uh, the notion of uh, speculation here is we bring data from DRAM to this SRAM based cache with a hunch that there is locality. And that's why whatever we have accessed before, we will be accessing it in the near future or whatever we have accessed before, we will be accessing the nearby addresses. Right? So because of this locality uh, it may happen that we will get our data here and there is no need to go to the DRAM, right so now we will be able to get our data in tens of cycles right but obviously the limitation is or the downside is the sram is actually not uh, pretty dense so it will have its space or size limitations okay so the, the obvious question comes right so if you have a processor uh, what should be the size of the cache which is closer to the processor? Remember, we are dealing with uh, latency first when we are talking about processor because we can't wait for hundreds of cycles to uh, get our data. So the first trade-off point should be the latency, right? And uh, obviously, uh, capacity, if, if you are going for a higher capacity, it will also take uh, more area. So depending on where you want to put this uh, uh, cache, uh, that, that will be another trade-off right 
and if you go for let's say high capacity if you want to make sure that okay i don't go to dram for most of the time then you have to like create an mb uh, uh, of mb subcast so let's say compared to a kb subcast kb stands for kilobyte mb stands for megabyte and so in that case the latency will get affected so let's say if this one is taking one cycle this will take let's say 30 cycles right so that that's the trade off that as a designer we have to uh, deal with so let's look at uh, the notion of cache access and dram access latency from the processor point of view if you remember our uh, out of order uh, example uh, we commit in order right and then there are instructions that to wait uh, for for our in order commit so ideally the processor demands all the loads to take maybe maximum one cycle right so that all these instructions won't wait for a uh, costly load which is coming from the memory stage of the pipeline then uh, the overall ipc will be uh, higher right but that's not going to happen as we have already seen the cycle la latency of SRAM and DRAM. So let's understand what's the impact of one DRAM access on uh, a super scalar out of order processor. So let's assume a uh, four fetch processor, which means we are fetching four instructions per cycle. Okay. And let's take a recent commercial machine uh, of four gigahertz frequency. Uh, that means the clock cycle time is 0.25 nanosecond right so which means in 0.25 nanosecond we are fetching four instructions right so in one nanosecond we will be fetching 16 instructions and if we uh, go for a dram that takes let's say 100 nanoseconds okay which means we are talking about 1600 instructions that can get executed in one dram access so that's the impact one dram access can be compared with 1600 instructions entering into the pipeline right and uh, in the worst case it may happen that it will just stall the pipeline it, it will uh, make sure that the pipeline doesn't move right yeah, obviously it won't allow 1600 instructions uh, there is a limit in the processor pipeline uh, depending on other structures that are used for out of order processor but but uh, things will be really worse with with uh, frequent dram access okay so now uh, let's bring CAS into picture uh, so let's let's have a CAS which is closer to processor and uh, cycle latency of few cycles so uh, current machines will have uh, a pro cache closer to the processor of uh, 32 to 64 KB and the latency will be in the form of one to four cycle. Okay. So if we have that, uh, we will get around 32 KB of data uh, in uh, one to four cycle. For rest of them, we have to go to uh, DRAM, right? And uh, if your working set fits into this cache, the notion of working set is the data footprint that you need then uh, we may not go to the DRAM frequently and this would be good enough right? but if you remember or if you look at uh, the current trend where we are actually dealing with a large amount of data forget about kvs and mbs we are dealing with gvs uh, then uh, one level of cache won't be good enough so which means we need multiple levels of caches right uh, similar analogy the way we started with the discussion of memory hierarchy now we need cache hierarchy where something which is closer to processor is faster and then maybe a middle level where you have hundreds of kbs uh, reasonable latency and then maybe a bit high latency but uh, you design it for capacity right and then uh, so typically in uh, today's world you will find uh, there are uh, three levels of caches l1 l2 and l3 okay and l3 is usually shared by multiple cores so we'll talk about that later but uh, at this moment you can assume that uh, this is the path that the processor uh, goes through for a load right uh, the question that should come uh, to your mind is how many labels should we create right why three why not five why not ten right so as long as we are getting benefit by adding another hierarchy keeping other uh, trade-off points uh, certified then yes we can go for multiple levels so the total latency should be less than the DRAM latency so that's the goal because DRAM latency is costly
the moment you uh, put another cast level let's say l4 uh, l5 or so and suddenly if uh, l5 start taking uh, say, thousands of cycles then there is no point okay so the key takeaway from uh, the discussion so far is we have a multi-level cache hierarchy with uh, different requirements so the first level l1 is actually designed keeping latency and bandwidth in mind okay so bandwidth is actually crucial because we are dealing with a highly aggressive out of order processor uh, so we should have uh, we should have the notion of uh, multiple load accesses per cycle then comes the l2 which is actually for latency uh, this is this is actually a sweet spot for all the latency related optimizations we'll discuss about it uh, sooner maybe in a week's time and then l3 is actually designed keeping capacity in mind so that you don't go to dram uh, frequently okay so but with that i'll stop here thank you